When I was a teenager, my mom saved me from buying a $500 Louis Vuitton wallet, and I am glad she did. Now imagine for a second you're at your own funeral. I know, I know, kind of morbid. And then imagine somebody coming up to your grave, saying their goodbyes, and saying something like, Thomas with the $500 Louis Vuitton wallet, I will miss you and that wallet so much. Rest in peace. Now, of course, that is not reality, or at least I hope it's not reality for most people. In truth, most people will never remember you for your materialistic possessions, but for something completely different, which I will get back to a little bit later on in this video. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm actually glad that my mom saved me from something that seems so trivial as an expensive wallet. And it's actually one of the most prevalent and dire traps that we face in today's world, which we have faced throughout history as well. But it seems as though that this problem is only getting worse. You see, she actually saved me from falling into a massive consumerism trap and into falling victim to signaling some sort of status and wealth through materialistic possessions. Although I'm no history expert, it is clearly visible that throughout history, people have used possessions as some sort of power or status signal, usually kings and other higher ranks. However, throughout history and especially in today's world, these things have become more and more accessible and also the kind of like perceived status has changed from various different possessions. So maybe back then, a couple hundred years ago, it was mainly gold and jewelry and something like that, which it is still today, but also some things like, you know, having an iPhone or having, I don't know, some sort of car has some sort of status or power or wealth signal. And we as a society have developed something that is very strange and also very destructive, in fact, for individuals as well as a collective. We tend to measure ourselves and others um, with these or kind of like through these possessions. So we strive for a life that signals some sort of exclusivity and status to the outside world, to your surroundings. You see, the moment you arrive on this planet, and especially in the Western world, you are being exposed to a huge, vast amount of materialism and overconsumption. Now, inherently, consumption isn't anything bad, so to speak, but it has grown to be a problem with us humans, and especially, like I said, in the Western world, where we overconsume, usually out of either signaling that we want to be some sort of I don't know, rich, healthy, wealthy human being, whatever, but also because it's accessible. We can. We can either buy things in cash because we have the cash or we can even buy it on credit because, you know, that seems to be the thing today, which is absolutely insane. But it is what it is. <laughs> it only became clear years later just how significant that event was when my mom stopped me from buying that expensive wallet, which, by the way, I could have gotten a better wallet, cheaper wallet, and under better labor conditions, just saying. <laughs> um, you see, it had an impact, a lasting impact on the rest of my life so far. I am a much more mindful consumer. I really buy things that I ideally only need or that I really want because I want them for myself, not because I want to signal anything to the outside world. And she always taught my brother and me that when it comes down to the end, I guess, people will not remember you by your possessions. You see, true value doesn't come from possessions. Rather, it comes from your experiences and how you treat yourself and your environment. It's about how you bring more value to this planet, to your own life and to other people's lives. It's not about gathering so many things that you are kind of like um, not able to breathe anymore in your own home because you have so much clutter and so many things that you don't even know what to do with. And then when you die, your relatives might even have to throw away all of it because it's useless and it doesn't bring any value to any anybody, you know? But I do want to say this, of course, absolutely, you can buy whatever you want. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody. I, I can't tell you what to do and I don't want to do that. But I do want you to be aware of why you are buying things. Ask yourself whenever you want to buy something, ask yourself, why do I actually want to buy this? What made me want to 
get this thing? What made me want to spend my possibly hard earned money on it? And what will I do with it? The more you do this, and of course, at first, it's going to be a little bit more effort, but down the road, it'll pay off. Um, the more you do this, you will realize certain habits and patterns that you may have learned unconsciously throughout time and that you've been conditioned to, I guess, believe and execute, you know, because with all the advertising and with all the things that you see around either outside or on social media or on the media or in TV shows, movies, whatever it is, the more you see that, the more you're exposed to that, the more chances you have at wanting certain things because the way they are portrayed is usually a way to get you feeling as though you're missing out or to get your feeling as though that product or that thing is something that you absolutely need, which in most cases you absolutely don't need it. Just a little secret here on the side, you know? What I would like this video to be for you is some sort of anchor and some sort of tool that you can come back to and remember that you are not measured by your possessions. You as a person are not defined whether or not you have an iPhone, an iPad, a car, some sort of laptop, certain brands of clothing or whatever, it really doesn't matter. What really matters is how you are as a person, how you treat the people around you, how you treat your surroundings and how you treat yourself. Are you a decent person or are you an asshole? Are you gathering things just for the sake of signaling some sort of exclusivity or wealth or are you buying things because you truly enjoy them and because you want them and because you don't want to impress anybody else. If you like this sort of video on consumeristic topics, I will definitely be making more of those amongst others in the future. Um, feel free to check out my other videos and stick around if you want to. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!